everyone. It's John Broussard, Member of Parliament for Barrie Innisfil, and uh, we are certainly living in extraordinary times right now with the uh, COVID-19 virus that has been uh, circulating right across the country. Uh, I want to assure everyone that uh, we are working extremely hard uh, at the federal level. Uh, all parties are working together to make sure that, um, you know, Canadians have the support that they need, both from a personal standpoint and from a business standpoint. And this is really all hands on deck. All three levels of government have been working very, very closely, federal, provincial and municipal, uh, to make sure that we're there for Canadians. Uh, locally, I can tell you that uh, I have uh, put myself in a position where I am self-imposing uh, quarantine on myself so that I can deal uh, with the many issues that are coming before me. My staff and my office are there, uh, but the office is closed to face-to-face uh, uh, -face contact. Uh, but since this really started up last Friday, uh, my staff have been there uh, every single day to answer phone calls and emails directly to help as many people and direct as many people as possible. My Ottawa office uh, remains open. Again, it's uh, closed to face-to-face -face contact, uh, but we are uh, certainly working with the government to, uh, to provide updates to uh, the residents and businesses of Barrie Innisville as much as possible. Uh, I know locally, the local health authority, the Simcoe Muskoka District Health Unit has been um, working around the clock, uh, providing updates to the community. Uh, the Royal Victoria Hospital uh, has been providing updates as well. And so it's really important for everyone to heed the advice of local health authorities to make sure that we are social distancing, which is uh, clearly a new word that's come up, new words that have come up because of this situation. But it's critical if we want to, as the health authorities say, flatten the curve by really avoiding direct person-to-person -person contact uh, to help stop the spread of COVID-19. So I really encourage everyone to do what they need to do and to heed the advice of local health authorities to make sure that we're not uh, propagating the spread of COVID-19 within our communities. And so um, every day there's updates. I know I'm providing daily updates and as the information warrants, we're posting information on my website, uh, johnbroussard.com. Also my social media sites are being updated regularly at uh, John Broussard CPC. For my office, if you need to get a hold of us by email, the email address is john.brassard at parl, P -A -R -L dot G -C dot C -A. As well, my office phone number is 705-726-5959. And both our email and our phone lines are monitored not just during business hours, but after business hours as well. So if anybody has any questions, uh, please feel free to contact my office. But again, it's so important to heed the advice of local health authorities to make sure that we stop the spread of COVID-19. I've seen, again, at all levels of government, everybody, municipal, uh, provincial and federal, uh, the leadership within uh, our communities, uh, the local health authority, the Royal Victoria Hospital, everybody is trying to put out as much information as they can. Now, I know oftentimes it may seem like information overload, uh, but there really is uh, an appetite from uh, you know residents and businesses to get the type of information that's being put out there. And so uh, the community has certainly come together. I'm hearing stories, great stories, of uh, restaurants that are donating to the food bank, people helping people, um, helping seniors, uh, you know, getting groceries. And so this really is something that, you know, we as a community need to uh, ensure that we continue to do to help those people who are in need uh, today. But uh, uh, again, you know, I can't stress it enough that it's all hands on deck when it comes to this uh, situation with the COVID-19 vi uh, virus as it relates to governments, all levels of government, regardless of, of party stripe, uh, regardless of partisanship, everybody is working together to make sure that uh, we get our community through this.
So I know your riding hasn't declared a state of emergency, but this county of Simcoe has. Uh, can you help our viewers understand what that means? Well, it gives it gives authority um, for the county to appropriate resources where they think uh, it needs to go. Now, understanding, of course, that the city of Barrie is not part of the county of Simcoe. Uh, the town of Innisfil is, uh, but it really allows the county to uh, appropriate those resources, as I said. It also allows for financial um, um, dispersion of, disbursement of funds to make sure that they deal with this. Obviously, the Simcoe Muskoka District Health Unit, uh, which all of the member municipalities in the county of Simcoe and the two separated cities are part of, is going to need additional funds to deal with this situation. So it really, uh, really allows um, you know the county uh, to put itself in a position where it can respond effectively to the needs of people, people not just from a health standpoint, but also from an economic standpoint as well. So, um, you know, I know, you know, when some people hear the word uh, state of emergency, uh, you know, it may incite a little bit of panic. That's not the intent of what the county is trying to do, not the intent of what the province is trying to do. All they're trying to do is make sure uh, through this state of emergency that it triggers certain mechanisms that allows for the appropriation of resources and money to be focused in dealing with this situation. That's, that's what the emergency calls for. Canada and the U.S. have a strong relationship with respect to trade. Uh, almost $2 billion a day in trade is done. And so we want to make sure that the supply chains are met uh, and kept uh, intact. And so uh, non-essential travel means that uh, people wanting to cross the border on both sides won't be allowed in. I think that's a prudent measure in order to, uh, to address uh, the spread of COVID-19. Uh, we're also hearing as well, and I know my office has been dealing with this, of people stranded um, in, uh, in other countries because of complete lockdowns. Uh, for example, Peru and Morocco has a large amount of Canadians that are there. Uh, and I know that the government and the Foreign Affairs uh, Department is trying their best to make sure that uh, they deal uh, with the situation as best they can. Uh, but in those cases, they're not allowing any air traffic in. So any thought of a repatriation flight or the government of Canada supplying that, um, you know, certainly uh, the foreign affairs minister has stated that uh, that's not likely to happen. And there is going to be uh, people that are going to be stranded, unfortunately, Canadians who are going to be stranded in those countries uh, for a period of time. Uh, but as it relates, uh, you know, more specifically to the Canada-U.S. border, uh, I think it's a prudent measure uh, to make sure that they shut the border down uh, in order to eliminate the potential of the spread of COVID-19 uh, while maintaining uh, the trade, the very important trade that both Canada and the U.S. rely on. You know, I can't stress enough how important it is right now for all of us to be mindful of our actions with respect to the spread of this virus. Um, we have to make sure that we distance ourselves socially. We have to uh, ensure that we're heeding the advice of the experts who are part of our uh, local uh, health authority and RBH. And we also have to make sure that we're informed. And again, uh, there is a tremendous amount of information that's out there uh, we are updating uh, as quickly as we can as the information comes to us, uh, oftentimes uh, in minutes or hours. Uh, and so I would encourage anybody that if they need uh, information on this to go to my website, johnbrassard.com, J-O-H-N-B-R-A-S-S-A-R-D.com, or you can go to any one of our social media platforms at John Broussard, CPC. We're updating regularly. We're providing uh, daily media updates as well um, so that uh, they can be posted on media sites. Uh, but the uh, most important thing is to make sure you do everything you can uh, to prevent uh, the spread of COVID-19 within our community. Uh, lastly, what I'd, what I'd like to say is that, you know, we will get through this. Uh, there's no question about it. Um, Canada has been a strong and resilient uh, nation. We have uh, faced uh, troubles and tribulations in our history. 
and we will get through this, uh, and we'll do it together as Canadians, as we always do. And so uh, I want to encourage everyone within our community to look after each other, uh, make sure that our most vulnerable are, uh, are uh, you know, just simply a phone call or a text message just to say, hey, how you doing, right? Do you need anything? And, you know, even if, even if you're not self-isolating at this point, uh, you know, if somebody needs groceries, Make sure you do what you, you can to be a good neighbor and a good community-minded person. Uh, but Canada will get through this, and just be assured, uh, everyone in our community, that we are doing everything we can as leaders, as politicians, as members of our community to make sure that we mitigate uh, and control uh, this virus as, as, as best we can. And uh, I just encourage everybody to be good community-minded people and um, thank you for giving me this opportunity to Rogers TV and to you, Josh, uh, for speaking out from my home. <laughs>